Hello subscribers to the RPG Fanatic show. This is me, Kerry Martell, the RPG Fanatic. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's uh, continued to uh, support and watch my videos and, uh, and comment on my videos, including the, uh, the last two I made. Um, those of you interested in uh, Death, uh, Death Vest Ninja G-Kazer, uh, pleased to let you guys know that uh, I have acquired uh, a good camera. Well, uh, it's, a, oh, it's a better camera than I've been using. That's what I'll say. Better than I've been using. It is the uh, Nex VG10. Yeah, yeah. And it has uh, interchangeable lenses. Just right here. But damn. So basically, uh, this is HD. This is an HD camera. Um, it's AVC HD, which isn't like the greatest uh, HD format to be uh, editing and doing the level of compositing work I'm going to be doing. But uh, it's still a very good format compared to the, you know, the DV stream I've been using with my GL2. Uh, will I be using this camera for RPG Fanatic videos? Uh, the answer is no, I will not. Uh, there's a reason for it. Uh, I already did some tests with the camera, and because of the, uh, the, the lens, the auto uh, focus, it likes to focus on whatever is directly in front of it whenever you operate it. Well, in this case, it directly focuses on the background. I added uh, some posters, by the way, trying to you know, spruce up the, the uh, set design. But anyway, so when I sit down in front of the camera, because it's focused back here, uh, I'm all blurry. And uh, to make matters worse, uh, the, the uh, LCD uh, flip here, it doesn't uh, go the other way. Now, on my GL2, I can uh, put the camera on a tripod and I can flip the LCD screen around so I can see myself and try to somewhat uh, po uh, position myself and align myself with the rule of thirds and so forth. Uh, I can't do that with this camera. This camera needs someone to actually operate it. And uh, since I shoot the show all by myself, I can't really do that. Um, in the future, uh, when I have a real budget for the show and can justify having a crew to film stuff, uh, I'll start using that camera, but for now, it's still going to be uh, the same GL2. But um, I don't think anybody really cares. Uh, I would be surprised if people really care because, you know, this isn't a very high-budget show. Um, I don't think, you know, th does anybody care? Let, let me know if you care if it's HD or not, and uh, I'll try reconsidering things if that's the case. Um, but for now, I'm not planning to, to change the video format. Uh, because it's the end of the season, it's the new year, uh, I will be making some uh, adjustments to the intro. Um, someone has said that I should not change the intro because they like the old, uh, it's like, you know, someone's up late at night playing the game, it's a little bit eerie, and they like that. And I agree, that's, a, that's kind of what I was going for. So let me know if, you know, you want to see a completely different intro, if you want the intro to stay the same, uh, if I want to record something that is very similar using my new uh, apartment versus the really crappy apartment I used to be living in that has the background with the window and you know, the really weird drapes and stuff. Anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, also, uh, for those of you who are interested, I have started doing uh, reviews of Japanese Takazatsu shows. <clears throat> I have an Ultraman review. The link is here, so you can check that out if you like. Uh, I also put up a couple other videos, one on Japanese versus American storytelling, which will be here. And uh, this is basically a, a comparison of the different uh, narrative models that are used in American and Japanese uh, shows. They also use it in video games. And I think it's important to point out these differences. Uh, I didn't have any like real images to, uh, for that video because I couldn't find any that weren't like, you know, copyright claimed of like Kabuki theater stuff. Uh, so I really, I, I couldn't justify using them and, you know, risk losing my partner status. So all it has is the caption at the bottom. Uh, hopefully, that'll be, you know, good enough. It's probably not good enough. Eventually, I'll probably redo the video when I have my own footage of Kabuki Theaters. But uh, for now, it is it is what it is. <sighs> New review. Um, I did Willow last month, uh, and then I just finished up Valkyra Chronicles 2. Uh, to be coming will be Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, and uh, after that, I'm not really sure. There's some more games I'm working on, but I don't know when I'm really going to finish them. Uh, I will, I, at some point in time, I will do a review of Kamen Rider V3. I have the entire collection of the entire show right here. Uh, I've had this for a while. Uh, I just, I, and I've watched all the episodes too, so I, I know what it is. 
uh, it's just a matter of me deciding what um, what clips I want to use and what I really want to say about the show, uh, which I like. Uh, I might also do a review of the anime of Kikaiator because um, I like that. But I feel kind of weird about uh, doing a review of Kikaiator, the anime uh, reboot, before I do a review of the original TV show. And to be honest, I haven't seen the original TV show. I've seen just clips of it from YouTube. So I kind of feel like I should watch the original before I review the anime. But I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Um, let's get into the questions from last time. Okay. Um, first question is by uh, Sound X Fury. Couple of things, if that's all right. Do you think WoW is ultimately the best in massively multiplayer online RPGs? And how long do you think it will dominate the market for? Um, I, I don't know if it's the best. Uh, WoW is certainly one of the best designed. Um, I don't think it's the greatest game ever made. But as far as uh, massively multiplayer online RPGs go, uh, it's pretty good uh, competitor, which is why it's so popular. Um, I don't f think it will continue to dominate the market um, overall. I think eventually there will probably be a different uh, game that is made that is at least equally popular as well. But it will probably be in a different uh, subgenre. WoW is a very specific sub subgenre of computer RPG. Um, and it's basically, uh, what was it called? Uh, it was based off of MUD. I can't remember the name of it. Um, Hold on. Okay, the name of the mud I'm thinking of is Dicku Mud. And it's basically uh, the first multi-user dungeon that uh, wanted to completely replicate everything that Advanced Dungeons & Dragons had. Uh, and basically, WoW descends directly from Dicku Mud. Uh, Dicku Mud, and then it was EverQuest, really. EverQuest was the first graphical, basically, Dicku Mud, to the point that uh, a lot of the text in EverQuest, uh, so they say, I haven't played Dicku Mud myself, this is hearsay, but most of the text in Dicku Mud was exactly the same as, uh, most of the text in EverQuest was exactly the same as Dicku Mud. So it was basically just a graphical version of Dicku Mud. World of Warcraft uh, descends directly from EverQuest because the people who played uh, EverQuest happened, uh, some of the people happened to be people who worked for Blizzard. And they had one of the top raiding guilds on the server. And then they decided they wanted to make their own version of EverQuest, which was basically World of Warcraft using their Warcraft franchise. So uh, within that very specific uh, subgenre of uh, basically Dungeons and Dragons online, uh, I think WoW is going to continue to be the best uh, as things are right now. Now, um, if they drop the ball, like Sony did, and give an edge for somebody else to just swoop in and make a better game, sure. But I really don't think that's going to happen with Blizzard because of the way Blizzard uh, operates. But I certainly think that somebody else will eventually make a game that is equally uh, as popular as World of Warcraft, but it will probably belong in a different subgenre. Like, uh, say, Atlantic Online. That's not competing directly with World of Warcraft, because it belongs to a different subgenre of computer RPG, which is a little bit more of like a console-style RPG. Okay, the next question you had was, what did I think of Final, Final, Final Fantasy VII on release, if I played it then, and do you think any differently now? Uh, I played it on release. I thought it was the most amazing thing ever. It was almost like a religious experience when I put it in and saw that FMV sequence uh, over Midgar, and it descends through you know the alleyways and stuff, and there was Eris. That was incredible. And then there was the trains. I love that game then, I love it now. So, uh, it's a great game. Uh, let's see. Uh, Darsane, one asked me, was the freeware roguelike Castle the Winds? I answered no. Uh, this one that I was thinking of was an MS-DOS game, and it used uh, a smiley face sort of uh, character, uh, and, but it was like um, an actual font, not an actual, you know, Image. They didn't have, couldn't support images with this program. This is very old school. Uh, the game that I was thinking of. Uh, Leo Hazard Channel asks a uh, somewhat serious question for the student sword. Uh, what's your damn malfunction? Well, what is your malfunction? What is my malfunction? Numbnuts, what's your malfunction? Did your mommy and daddy not show you enough attention when you were a child? How dare you ask me such a question? He says, uh, first of all, you're a sponge, I'll bet you don't eat, probably. And second, 
Is an RPG fanatic already combat trained? And wouldn't most RPG heroes start as sexually ambiguous andro uh, androgynous teens, androgynous, whatever, uh, teens, not combat trained U.S. soldiers? You're wasting your time. Go bother an airman or a seaman. I am not a sponge. I resent the idea that I am a sponge. I am forged out of the finest Chinese plastic, the greatest material ever invented by anything. Lastly, not all RPG heroes are, in fact, uh, elf boys, okay? There's Cloud Strife. He was a former soldier, so there. As for the idea that I train someone from the chair course or the squids, that will be the day that I change my name from the student sword to the poke sword. Ha! The next question is by L Cook 3 Who do you think is the biggest disappointment of RPG Hero? You know, this is a really hard question for me to answer. Um, I have played a lot of computer RPGs. Uh, some of them I can't even remember their names, or exa their exact name anyway, or the characters because they were so forgettable. Uh, they're such terrible games. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a video uh, actually doing some research into the games I've played over the years. I'm going to make a list, basically, and track down what their na specific names are, and then I will look at all the protagonists and say, you know, which one is really, you know, crappy, and why are they crappy? I'll make a video about it. I like what the top ten, you know, worst computer RPG heroes. And hopefully that will answer your question. Uh, I don't know when I'll finish it, but it will definitely come out. He also has a question for you. Um, how does a sword stay sharp? Which makes better mates, Japanese swords, or double-edged swords? And what's the worst thing you have done to a roommate? Swords stay sharp by killing people. Uh, I definitely go for Japanese type of katana blades because double-edged swords make poor cuddle bunnies. Uh, the worst thing I've ever done to a roommate? I don't really like to admit this, but one time I was teaching this elf boy how to, uh, you know, be a hero. But he was just so gosh darn cute and feminine-like. And at night, I used to polish myself over his face as he slept soundly like a baby. I will not be sleeping tonight. Um, RM RPG Maker 2K Midi asked me, uh, if you don't have a lot of time to devote to chess, but still want to play, you should check out uh, chi55.com. It lets you play slowly, like correspondence style, and emails you when it's your turn. Uh, I responded back to him already. Uh, thank you for telling me about the service, but I probably would get annoyed if someone else took a long time to respond to a move. I wouldn't want to do that to someone else either, because sometimes I'm doing something online and I have to stop. Even when I'm uh, playing the games, uh, I have to stop and do something else because I get a phone call or um, uh, I, I suddenly get a burst of inspiration and you start writing you know, something for a script or planning or whatnot. Uh, so it's really, when you play chess, it's better to be physically with someone and not distracted by anything else. This is my opinion. Uh, RPG Swagman asked me, uh, thank you someone else who thinks that Castlevania is an action RPG series. Um, well, the ones Ego made starting with Symphony. But I gotta admit, I quickly classify any game that has enough RPG elements, an RPG, or one of the many sub-RPG genres. For example, I still classify Zelda as an action RPG series, as well as Wonder Boy 3 uh, and 5. Great video, and thanks for the link to the original podcast. I'll listen to it now. My response was, uh, with the exception of Zelda 2, I don't consider Zelda games to be RPGs. I've explained why in the second part of my History of Console RPGs video. The short of it is, there is no statistical character growth derived from repetitive actions. Basically, Link can only improve by gathering power-ups and not by killing hundreds of foes. Link cannot improve at any task as is fighting, simply by doing it over and over again. All RPGs have that uh, gameplay mechanic. Um, Ugly Pink Moose uh, disagrees with me, and we had some discourse about it. Uh, the short of it is, I'm going to make a video specifically on this subject of uh, why uh, games like Link um, games like Zelda are not computer RPGs. Uh, and it's really, but it's basically just going to be sort of a rehash of what I had said at the end of the history of console RPGs. Uh, it, but I'll try to expand it a little bit. 
but it's basically it doesn't have any mechanics really descending from Dungeons and Dragons, uh, which is really what all computer RPGs have. It doesn't matter what it is. Even if you look at the the so Romancing Saga series, where um, it doesn't seem to have any character classes, or it doesn't have uh, they don't have levels. They really do have levels. Uh, it's just hidden completely from the uh, the player, and it's um, there's experience points as well. So there are levels and there are experience points. It's just handled a little bit differently. And uh, I keep meaning to review one of these games so I can explain the, the specific mechanics so that you could understand that, yeah, it actually does descend directly from Dungeons & Dragons. It's just handled a little bit differently. I'll make a video on it eventually.